I'm here with Lisa Lutz today, and, and Lisa is a New York Times bestselling author for several of her books, and and now she's got a really big event coming up Tuesday. And um, tell me about your new book, Lisa, and, and tell me what's going on. <laughs> well, so I have my first uh, real crime novel coming out on Tuesday. It's called The Passenger, uh-huh. and it's about a woman who – so crisscrosses the country changing her identity and is clearly running from something, but we're not sure what. And I think <laughs> the whole point of the book is figuring out who she is. It's sort of a, that's it's not a who done it, but a who is it. <laughs> okay, I hadn't heard that phraseology before, but I think that makes a lot of sense. And and you know, I um I've I've read the book and, and I really enjoyed it and I, um, because I, I mean, to me, identity is is clearly what you know. You're right. I mean, that's what the search is about. It's uh, this woman is just so many different things. Right, and just and, as much as the reader doesn't know who she is, I think she doesn't know who she is. I think that she has a better idea than we do, but I agree. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> But I think that I think that clearly, um, you know, just even from where where we start, which is kind of in this, uh, she's in a, a fix. I mean, she's in a horrible situation, and because of her past, she has to kind of treat it differently than other people might. And right. so, you know, you kind of start there. But you know, as I understand it, this kind of was there kind of a almost a getting permission to to write this book or uh it was something that you kind of told them ahead of time what you were going to do right actually no it was um it was uh, swapped out for another book in the contract and oh so, okay um we were trying to figure out what I should do instead and uh, you know I've I did at this point uh six Spellman books with Simon and Schuster Right. And I was really feeling like I was tapped out. And I, 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 I don't think you can write a good book if that's not the book you want to write. Uh-huh. And I'd had this idea in my head for a while. And even though I'd never written a a serious book, well, I, I've written How to Start a Fire, the book before this. is a serious book. But for the most part, I'm known for comedy. Right. And so, you know, my editor just took a chance. Like, I gave her a vague outline when we were sitting in a bar, and I'd probably had three drinks at that point. <laughs> um, so I can't imagine. I'm not more well-spoken when I drink. Um, I can't imagine that it was an excellent pitch. <laughs> it, and so when that happened, um, mm-hmm. kind of, I mean, tell me what was the genesis for this idea? Because, I mean, it's one of those books that we, we can't give away the ending, which I think is the best part of the book. But, um, you know, tell me a little bit about what what brought you to this specific topic or this idea. Um, hmm, that's an interesting question. Sometimes these things are hard to answer because I had an idea floating around in my mind for probably 20 years. I originally wanted to write a screenplay, and I remember I thought I'd call it Hit and Run. And it was uh-huh. a, about a woman who who had to keep basically leaving wherever she was because her past caught up with her. But not uh-huh. necessarily her original past, but maybe just the very <laughs> recent past. <laughs> it's sort of like layers of identities, and they're all giving her trouble. Um, right. But, yeah, it's, it's it's partly about the idea that you just can't escape anything you've done. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it's the same thing, theory as, like, when you have a uh, uh, someone who's committed a crime, and they could, in theory, get away with it, but they, they do something wrong because the guilt gets to them. But there's, uh-huh. there's always, I feel like you just, you really can't, you're never home free. You, you're never clear. Right. Um, so that was the, the genesis. But, you know, whenever you start a book, at least when I do, I don't start with a complete outline. So right. So I never know completely what's going to happen, where it's going to go. I knew, I knew the, the structure of the book when I began it, but I hadn't quite figured out 
why she left in the first place. What went wrong? Why did she originally have to run? And I okay. had to sort of figure that out as I was writing. Uh huh. And and so how long did it take you to write this? It took longer than the Spellman books because the Spellman books used to be sort of once I got the hang of them, I could write a first draft in four months or five months. Uh-huh. This was an on and off thing over maybe a year or more. Uh huh. But yeah, longer when if we include then the the, the editing process. Uh huh. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's always longer. <laughs> yeah. So maybe a year and a half. And so um, when you're doing that, I mean, do you kind of feel like you've left the Spellmans behind, or um, what's it like to kind of be from one place and in one kind of state of mind and then moving to another? It was incredibly liberating, I have to say. I did, I never felt weighed down by the Spellmans, but I think when I was free to – write an entirely different book, envision new types of characters, uh, take on rules, uh, new rules for writing, because the Spellman's abided by a certain set of rules. Uh-huh. And I, I never realized how kind of shackling it was to, A, not be able to kill people in a novel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> that, that's just a to- totally too much to ask, isn't it? <laughs> I know. Now that I, now that I can, I'm, I'm a bit bloodthirsty, I must admit. <laughs> I mean, there, there are a couple of people that I want to ask you about, and we'll, we'll try to draw it out a little bit without spoiling the big release. So tell me a little bit about um, the the character who has so many different names, uh, the main character, just so many different names and different identities. Um, she runs into a woman named Blue. And tell us a little bit about kind of who who Blue is or who she appears to be and and what she does. Uh, Blue is a bartender that our character, I, I'm always at a loss of what to call her because I feel like <laughs> when I name her, it's not actually her name. And I don't, in my head, she has no name. Um, well, and, and we should add that the different sections of the book are titled by the different character names. Right. I, I mean, you know, it's the same character, but but she, she, now she's named this, and now she's named that, and so uh, that's why it's difficult to identify her. But but again, um, keep tell, talking to us about Blue. Right. So she meets Blue along the way, and and Blue recognizes that our character, our main character, has a secret. Um, but Blue is a very different type of person. She has her own moral code, which is much looser than than um, than the hero, heroine of the story. So, Blue. Now, why do you, now why do you say that? Because I, uh, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't identify their. I mean, at least at the beginning, their moral codes as being different. But but why do you think they are? Um, I feel like there's that would require spoilers. But <laughs> <laughs> I think that Blue uh, doesn't just act based on the need to survive, like. If you do something wrong to survive, that's one thing. But uh-huh. if you do something that's very questionable from an ethical standpoint, just because you feel like it or think it's right, you know, just because you think it's right, you want to do it, that, that's a different thing. Uh-huh. Um, well, and I certainly get the feeling that um, – if uh, you know our main character had to keep going, that that's that well might be exactly how she turned out. I would uh, agree with you completely. Uh-huh. I would yes, which is why she she does have to change um, directions. I think uh-huh. when she recognizes she's heading in the direction of blue, she's going to be like her. Right, and and so what happens um, to kind of lay this out for people is um, we start when our main character is just discovering that her husband has died in this kind of strange way. And, I mean, since that's in the first few pages, I don't think that's a spoiler. No, right. But, you know, he, it appears he fell down the stairs. He's dead. And her reaction, which is highly suspicious, is, hmm, I better get out of here. She says uh-huh. she didn't do it, but she has to leave. Well, um, and then not only that, she moves the, the body, but she can't move it very far at all. Yeah, well, she she discovers too late that it's actually really hard to move. 
completely dead body. People, do, the, the thing is, I wrote about this in another book. People do it in movies all the time. It's really hard. Uh-huh. I, I feel like I act like I've tried to do it, but I was going to say I, I'm not going to ask you how you came to that knowledge, but <laughs> <laughs> I took a poll. <laughs> and so um, I don't know who your poll would have been of. <laughs> I know that's even scarier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so when when they um, then they kind of get to their. Uh, I mean, then she takes off and and sheds the first identity and and moves into another, and that's when she meets Blue. And then, um, you know, things continue to get hairier, although Mm -hmm. at one point she kind of gets to move and have this period of of some rest, I guess is what I would call it. Yeah, there are periods of rest throughout the book moments uh-huh. moments where she has peace and and she she sponges off of blue for a while but um it's not a long term solution no and and then and then blue makes it very hard for her to stay so she has to move on to other places right and and i guess that one thing is um you know there, there's definitely kind of the sense of one of those movies that has a kind of road trip kind of feel to it, whether it's like it's um, absolutely a road trip book. Completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 when I say movie, I mean you know you just kind of have visuals that that bring up certain things like Natural Born Killers or Thelma and Louise and mm-hmm. and things like that, where the characters are, you know in the road is almost a character in the in the book. You know, again, you being in charge of spoilers here. I mean, what are some of your favorite moments? What are things that stand out to you? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I, I, yes, I know I'm in charge of spoilers. Uh, I think this is okay. She's briefly a school teacher, which I realize sounds scary based on her which behavior. Is, which is, but that's kind of like when she's the most restful period she has too. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. when she has some peace and she has a real job. And um, she likes these kids and one in particular. And Yes. And, and she's able to have a relationship with someone, which is, you know, she probably has her, one of her most important relationships in her adult life with that child. Uh-huh. Because the child it, isn't, a child is curious, but a child isn't going to ask so many questions that eventually they think, hmm, I think you did something bad once and I'm going to turn you in. Well, but then you could also say that her gift back to the child is to teach him about the road. Exactly. Exactly. Well, this is a town where she teaches. It's a very small town that where you have no hope of a future. And so she she wants this kid, and she wants the other kids to get out if they can. So she shows uh-huh. them, like, literally how to get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> and and so that particular setting, the um, is it Montana? Is that which state it's set in? Yeah. And... So tell me how you decided to to set that part of the book there. I have a a framed map on my wall, and I can stick magnets to it. And Uh as I started the book, I picked one place to begin, and then I just kind of imagined, like if I were driving and I was first trying to get away and pick a place to go, what sort of makes sense? Uh I I don't know. It It was very... Uh, intuitive and vague. It wasn't calculated. It wasn't like, oh, I want to feature Austin, Texas. It was just like, oh, yeah, you know, Austin, Texas, if you take this road to this road, you'll end in Austin. Okay, I could do that. Uh huh. And so that was really how I came up with these places. Well, because it just feels like, uh, I mean, did you visit them? I mean, what, what was the process of writing the book in that sense like? Um. I had visited some of the places. Some of the places are purely fictional. Uh Um, It was a mixed bag. It was, you know, when I write it, it, I don't tend to base things entirely on reality. Often I use some research I got from a friend, so I had some specifics. But, um, Uh yeah, I, I, I do, I've lately especially liked to make up places completely. Okay. Um, so some, some things are completely made up. Wow. And, and so, I mean, again, we can't talk about the ending because 
kind of these strange messages that we've been seeing as we go through the book, um, then in in the last kind of stretch run, we learn what all that means and and kind of the story that's led her to the road and, and you know, kind of a, a decade or more of, of running. And um, was what else did you learn about your writing in writing this totally different book that you just did? Um, I learned that I, I think with the Spellman books, there was like you had a caution in like, getting a plot that was too uh, kind of too crime novel So uh-huh. there had to be something more whimsical about a Spellman plot. And uh-huh. this book made me realize that I'm really into like writing a crime novel. I mean, I like, <laughs> <laughs> I like, I don't like things when they, the, 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 everything is super tidy and things come together that don't make any sense. I don't like uh-huh. that, but I do like, I do like surprises, and I like the reader to be a bit off balance until something is explained. Okay. Well, and, you know, I mean, because certainly you've got that. I mean, this book has that at stage. I mean, there there are times when you see these messages and you don't know what they relate to. Right. Um, So tell me, uh, I mean, this just appears to be the book that – Simon and Schuster is really, uh, you know, banking on to do very well, and and so um, kind of did that come together at any point, or what's been different about the way that all those things have fallen together with this book? I think it's one thing that's different is that it's it's just a different book. So with series, at some point it's hard to keep building an audience. Um, no one's going to uh-huh. review the fifth book or the sixth book in a series, let alone uh-huh. the even the second is pretty rare. Um, uh-huh. So I think that's one part of it. I think another part is just that people there really responded to it, and my editor got behind it. Um, you know, no one knew what to expect from me on this sort of thing, so... <laughs> <laughs> it is it is a bit of an about turn, but uh, uh-huh. it felt pretty natural to me once I got the voice right. It was hard, to, a little bit hard to initially to get the sort of the the need to find jokes. Um, yeah, yeah, that everything longer than three sentences needs a joke, and trying to yeah. get away from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, so now that you sit here a few days before this, when it's definitely had a great push, it's going to be seen in a lot of places over the next few weeks. It's a it's a really entertaining book that's definitely worth everyone's time. Um, what are your hopes for this book? You know, all you really want as a writer is to find more readers with each book, and you you hope people like the book. You hope people respond to the book. But my goal is to keep writing and to figure out. <laughs> how I can how I can do that, <laughs> but my goal is also to be able to write what I want to write. Like, I don't want to do another series. Um, I don't okay. think, at least not now. Uh-huh. I and I don't necessarily want to write another book like The Passenger. I have have a couple different things that I that I have in you know lined up, and I I just I think I like having the freedom to just write the story that. I want to write because that's going to be the best one. I guess. Sure. Yeah. Well, and so um, are there any kind of, I mean, are there any movie plans or any kind of things like that about The Passenger? Um, we're shopping it around. There's some interest, uh, but I don't have anything solid right now. Uh, well, uh, that that's an exciting thing. I mean, and, and tell me about your the couple of children's books that you've written. Tell me about those. Oh, well, there's really just um, one. It's called How to Negotiate Everything. And Uh it's it's actually a – it's really a piece of metafiction in Uh one of the Spellman books. A character, David Spellman, writes a children's book for his little sister um, (laughs) when she's young. And so as I started to excerpt that book in the original novel – I uh-huh. thought, oh, let me see if my friend Jamie, who's an illustrator, could illustrate some things. And when she showed me the illustration of this sort of half-written children's book, 
that we were going to include in the Spellman book. It's, uh, I believe it's in the, the, the fifth one or the sixth. Anyway, uh-huh. the illustrations were so great. I thought, oh, this should be a real children's book. <laughs> and we convinced S&S Children's to publish it. Wow. And, it's and- the, the credits are actually written by uh, David Spellman and Lisa Lutz, or with Lisa Lutz. Like, he gets equal credit. <laughs> and he is not real. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, well, and, that, and that's kind of, I, and that's actually an interesting thought in itself. And and so uh, tell someone maybe that, that's a reader and not a writer what it's like to live with all of these characters in your head. Um. <laughs> Uh, some days really confusing. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I think you can just sort of lose track of time and reality. I definitely, like, am a very spacey person. And so, like, let's just say today for the interview, I had to keep writing down, even though it's, like, in my calendar, I had to keep writing things down on a piece of paper. 3 p.m., Dale. (laughs) (laughs) To keep myself from doing something else completely and just totally like spacing out <laughs> well good i'm glad you did our, our audience is glad you did too but <laughs> um but i, I you know it, it just kind of seems like the the combination of the characters in the passenger and the spellman characters kind of both living in there uh, would be an interesting some interesting real estate there i guess is what i would say oh that that the whole idea is just terrifying <laughs> <laughs> So um, do you have anything you're working on next? you got anything started? Yeah, I have like about – I have over half of a rough draft on the next book, which is um, the tone is much less noir-y and dark, but it's very much a a serious crime novel about – it follows two friends uh, from their college years and then later in their sort of early middle age, a man and a woman who have just been – Remarkably close, but never romantic their whole lives. Uh-huh. And but there's this incredible loyalty there. But there's a suspicious death in in their college years that's linked to one of them, and then a murder later on. Uh-huh. Sort of about how they begin to see each other differently when the second uh, death occurs. Okay. And, and what eventually leads to the rift in their friendship. Wow. Well, do you think that one will be easier to write than than The Passenger because you've done it before? Or, um, it's not so. like The Passenger. There is something very sort of lean and stripped down and pure, I feel like, about The Passenger. This one's a little bit more complicated and so Played. Yeah. Um this uh-huh. one's this one's tough. Okay. But I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I don't know. So so over the next month, I, I saw that you're at one of my favorite bookstores in America, the uh, mystery bookstore in Seattle. Um, yes. Tell me some other places that you're going to be. Where where can people see you? They can see me in uh, Romans in L.A., uh, in Mysterious Galaxy in San Diego. Uh, uh-huh. Then I'm if you live in Tucson, the Tucson Book Festival is amazing, and that's the weekend of March 12th and 13th. Okay. So we'll be on some panels there, Poison Pen on after that, and Denver, and then uh, the Virginia Festival of the Book. Wow. Well, that's just – isn't that just exciting to have such a great kind of lead in to, to a new book? I am excited. I am. They've been <laughs> – I'm, I'm very pleased with Simon Schuster. They've been really good to me. Yeah, they're, they've been they've been great all around. So – um, well, I'm just going to invite everybody to to pick up a copy of The Passenger and and um, read it on your iDevice or your Kindle or your book, you know, your hardback book or however you want to get it because uh, I really enjoyed it. And uh, and Lisa, thank you for coming on with me. Thank you so much, Dale. Hope you enjoyed my interview with Lisa Lutz. When you get a chance, go to lisalutz.com or visit the links on dalewileyshow.net. Um, her book comes out March 1st, which is Tuesday, and I highly encourage you to go get that. Visit my site, which is again dalewileyshow.net. 
buy some books, throw some money, copyright 2016.